Hey, what's up? This is Hans from Request for Music, and today I'll um, do a Synclavier tutorial on FM modulation and show you a bit of what of what is done behind the screens and how it works and the things that you um, you don't normally see but are pretty uh, pretty handy to to look at sometimes. Um, so at the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a, s uh, a spectroscope which. Um, uh, which is a way of dif um, dividing all of the sound coming in into the partials that has, uh, has been used or have been used to build it. On the right side you'll see an oscilloscope that's uh, sort of viewing at the audio spectrum. Okay, um, anyway, FM modulation, frequency modulation, what it does, it's, um, it's thought of, it's, it's discovered by a guy called John Chowning back in the 70s and um, he was a professor looking at what um, analog synthesis would do when you were using vibrato um, or heavy, heavy vibrato on uh, some other sound. And he found out that uh, at some point it doesn't do a normal vibrato anymore, but it stabilizes and you get a real sound. And that's exactly what we use. And it has been used in the DX7 at first, and well, Synclavier does something like that. Um, it's um, probably not as flexible as the X7 is, but you can still do a lot of things. And um, normally a DX7 only works with sine waves and you can modulate with sine waves. And after, after that there came some other types like the TX81 and more types followed that had... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, other types followed that had um, more kind of waves to, uh, to modulate with. And... Um, well, Synclavier has this way of using additive synthesis by just putting sine waves and harmonics on top of each other and um, that way building sounds. And, um, well, let me first show you what happens when you press a key normally. Just I've, I've used the, uh, the very simple, simple sine wave this time, no effects on it, so it doesn't distort or color the view, so to speak. So. I'm using a, a C4 a and you see that you get this spike uh, which resembles the carrier um, on the, yeah, the, the harmonic on the carrier. And it shows you a sine wave on the, on the right, so it really shows you that a sine wave has been, um, has been created. Um, if I add another harmonic to it, say for instance the twelfth one, uh, so this one, you already see the image here in that it's, uh, you get a lot of sine waves on top of each other because the, the sine waves are added to each other in the carrier side. And you indeed see the spike on the, uh, on the spectroscope and in the oscilloscope you see that there's uh, yeah, an extra sound over it or an extra wave over it. The only thing is that the, uh, the, this is, these are built with Max MSP, which is a, a really cool program to do lots of lots and stuff in, um, with audio. And you can build your own spectrometer and, uh, or spectroscope and oscilloscope with it as well. The only thing is that it doesn't really synchronize, so it doesn't keep still enough. But you see that there are waves on top of each other. It's the sine wave, the, which is the actual wave that you see um, moving, and you see all of those smaller sine waves on top. Um, now, what the thing is, when you start modulating, because um, at the carrier side, you understand, hopefully, that you can add just just about every harmonic to it and um, and you you get those spikes which build to a co complete sound like this and you see that it's starting to get a bit safe uh, sawtooth shape like uh, and you'll see the differences because this was a sign this is what they try to uh, to use as a sawtooth and you actually see that it should be even sharper. Yeah, this it doesn't really have the shape of a sawtooth. Although you can change that, of course, by by adding volume uh, to all of those harmonics. I'll I'll try to uh, to get it a bit better.
you see that it's going to start to, to look like a sawtooth a bit more. And you see that on the uh, on the bottom left, the spectrometer or the spectroscope resembles the image of the carrier above, with a spike for every harmonic. Yeah, and that's very important. Um, now, uh, oh, I can show you the, the the square wave as well. And this also, you see that it's not exactly a square wave yet. They uh, they do use the um, uh, the formulas to to build this square wave, but apparently it's not really good enough. So uh, apart from that, what it looks here, this is what it outputs, and there's possibly a difference in there. Anyway, this looks more like a rectangular shape already. And the last one was the uh, triangle wave. That's pretty close. And um, in this one, you also see that you have these these bars on the bottom, which are the phases of the uh, of the the shapes of the waves. And you can see what it does with a sine wave. You see what it does in this image, you don't see it in oscilloscope because the oscilloscope tries to uh, to keep synchronized to the waves, so that's why it doesn't float along. Okay, so um, this is what, what is done with normal additive synthesis. You just add harmonics to each other. Um, when in using modulators, you start... Um, using vibrato on this carrier and since the frequency of the modulator is uh, is high enough it completely changes the sound and it stabilizes again um, modulating itself works in the way a sine wave does and you see that the sine wave goes down and up or, or up and down anyway um, and that's normally what you get when you're using a vibrato so you're going a bit faster you're going a bit slower and so on if you use the modulator on the carrier, it's going to um, to create that that sort of effect as well. And you don't you won't see that when I have it uh, have the carrier on the lowest frequency on the lowest harmonic because everything beneath that is um, is filtered off. But if I use a higher carrier, a higher harmonic for the carrier, you'll see what happens. I'll, first of all, I'll uh, I'll introduce some modulation to it. So I'll go into my mixer. Oops. Okay, so you see that the sound has, has changed. And also in the spectroscope you see that there's extra bars. I'll do it one octave up. You see that when I um, raise the value of the modulation, extra harmonics come in that are actually not within the original signal. And um, since this is at the same frequency as this, at a one, which is the one-on-one -on -one ratio, actually, what uh, what the DX7 used, and what's also available as a sort of global setting here with FM ratio. Uh, when you use a one-on-one -on -one modulator, uh, it gets spikes of one step further in the, in the spectrum. And um, if you increase the modulation to too much, um, the actual carrier frequency will be lower. And I'll show you with a, with a 
with a bar here somewhere halfway what happens when you uh, when you do this so I'll put this one up and I'll lower my modulation first so you get this single spike as you can see now when I when I dial up or when I uh, have get a higher value for my modulation on both sides of this carrier I'll get extra uh, harmonics yeah because it's vibrato and vibrato works um, on both sides of, of a null, so to speak. And the null is my, my harmonic here, so it's uh, it sort of reflects on both sides. So first of all, you see uh, two slight peaks coming up, and then the next harmonic comes along, and so on, until the harmonics get stronger than my, my actual carrier value and the actual carrier value is faded a bit and um, that's because of well it sort of resembles sort of a sine wave on both sides of this carrier um, but built with these harmonics So that way I can introduce harmonics that were not there in the original spectrum. And that's what you use. And if this uh, step of the, of the modulator is off, so it's not on, in a one-on-one -on -one ratio, but it's on a one-on-two, -on for instance, you will see that we'll, we'll get uh, harmonics in steps of those twos. Yeah, so the harmonics are now two steps away. So it's, it's the one, it's the third, it's the fifth, and seventh, and so on. For the rest, it has the same sort of uh, way of how it works. So at a certain value, or at a certain uh, modulation value, um, the value for the amplitude carrier goes uh, goes down so something like this okay and that actually works for all of those modulators so if i have a third one i'll be uh, three apart four And so on, but that um, that means that if you work with a carrier on on the first one, you can sort of create um, you you can have effect on how many um, harmonics there are. And that way, if you had a sound that needed. Um, the twos, the two, four, six, and cetera, et cetera. And um, I would normally do that with this one, yeah. And if I just needed the, or sorry, that would be the, the one, the three, five, seven, eight, seven, nine, et cetera, all the uneven ones. If I needed the even ones as well, but not as loud as the uh, third, fifth, and so on, then I would put my first one in and just make it less strong. And the total so that way I can create a very um, yeah uh, very complex waveforms uh, with just one carrier and one modulator and specifically in this way as Sinclair set up and as soon as the um, the uh, because at the moment they are all in the same line, yeah. It's 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 a one harmonic on this side, one harmonic on that side, two, two, three, etc. But if I change the ratio of this complete modulator here, which I can do from the mixer side, uh, for instance, by using fine tuning. I'm actually making very weird sounds, and it's. Um, and it's because the the uh, the harmonics are off then, and so that's better used for things like chimes and then all kinds of belly kind of stuff because they are inharmonic 
harmonics in there. Um, so still, I can use that a lot, and so I can use and create far, uh, far more complex spectras. Um, and you can tell from my voice, for instance, that there's in normal standard sound there's way more harmonics than I could normally use with the carriers. Yeah, uh, because if I hold a tone, ah, you see that there's a part in here in the lower spectra. There's a part here. There's a part here. So if I wanted to recreate that, I'd have to sort of build um, a, a combination of carrier and modula modulators to try and get that spectrum. Um, I will try to do that in the next one and see if I can build uh, a tone from looking at a sound and trying to recreate that. In the meantime, I hope this does some more on your technical knowledge of what an FM sound does. I hope that works. Uh, I'll see you back in the next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.